Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. As reported by the New York Times, engineers were baffled by the collapse of Building 7. Since no steel frame high-rise has ever completely collapsed due to fire, how are we to understand this mysterious event? High-rise buildings simply do not collapse due to fire. There has never been until 9-11 an experience where a high-rise building that was steel frame completely collapsed. There have been fires burned longer in similar structures without any collapse. This claims the fires were very large, very hot, and long-lasting, when in reality, observation, which has been researched by many people, shows these fires did, were, did not last very long. They were not in the locations where NIST claims they were at given times. I'm a fellow of the American Institute of Architects. For the 40 plus years that I've been practicing architecture, I have designed a variety of buildings from small houses to high-rise office buildings. Some of the high-rises that I've worked on are one shell and two shell here in Houston. I was project manager for a 22-story office building in Akron, Ohio. Later in the day when uh, World Trade Center 7 collapsed, they had already showed us pictures of a few fires in that building and I mean they weren't even raging and how could that cause a building to collapse as if it were imploded? Couldn't happen. According to lead investigator Sham Sunder of the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, World Trade Center 7 collapsed at freefall acceleration for more than 100 feet of its fall. What does the speed of the collapse reveal to us? Essentially, in less than seven seconds, uh, Tower 7 came down upon itself. It's just like taking your car keys out and just dropping them. That's how fast the building came down for over 100 feet. Which, and the only way you can get that is when there is zero resistance. And so what we're looking at is a building just coming straight down, falling right through itself with zero resistance. Buildings don't have zero resistance, which is why you feel comfortable walking into a building. This building had 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system, and that is intended to keep it from going anywhere. This is telling us that the building below it ceased to exist uh, for the first few seconds of the collapse of the building. Well, things in physics just don't cease to exist and cease to resist the forces that are on them. The building didn't disappear so the building can fall for 100 feet at free fall speed. That's impossible. That's a, a violation of, of the fundamental law of physics that says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. If floors fall, they tend to fall and are braced by the floor directly beneath it. And there's some delay there. Because of redundancy, because of uh, all the other columns in the building that were not affected. Even if a floor were to collapse, it still wouldn't be able to collapse all of the connections simultaneously at the rate that it did without secondary explosions. We might anticipate that an unevenly damaged building would fall over. Yet, videos of the collapse of Building 7 show a fairly symmetrical fall. How do we make sense of this? If the buildings had come down by fire, we would have seen a more natural progression of collapse. And clearly, a more asymmetrical pattern uh, should have been present. The symmetry is the smoking gun. It cannot happen that when you have asymmetric damage, you will get a perfectly symmetrical collapse. The exterior columns on the outside, on the outside as well as on the inside, at the bottom would have to be severed almost at the same time. I worked for Controlled Demolition Incorporated, CDI, the top rated explosive demolition firm in the world. 
what I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building uh, follows along with it. That's another indicator that this NIST report is very suspect. When it's all finished, the outside walls are piled one on top of the other right in the middle of the building. Just like a house of cards if it were coming down. According to NIST, the failure occurred at column 79 on level 12. This means basically a, they're talking about a single columnar collapse or failure that resulted in a total collapse of the building. That just does not make any sense. The explanations from FEMA and from NIST don't add up, but there is enormous circumstantial evidence, circumstantial and actually physical evidence as well, that would lead us to a different conclusion. And the conclusion is controlled demolition. This is controlled demolition. Zeker weten, zeker weten. Er is nagesprongen. Dit is een opdracht gebeurd. Dit heeft een team gedaan van experts. Building 7 to me is, is really what gives it away because that's a classic case of controlled demolition. You are watching Colorado Public Television 12. This is the original site of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Construction is now underway where dramatic new facilities are being erected. Just 10 years ago, the planes hit the towers, cutting through some exterior and interior supporting structural steel columns. The fuel from the planes ignited office fires across several floors. According to the official reports, the structural steel frame was weakened and failed causing a total progressive collapse of each tower. Does the official explanation make sense? Was there a comprehensive investigation that examined all of the evidence? I walked into the office uh, and the first uh, words that I heard was a plane's just run into the World Trade Center. And my initial thought was, well, that's okay. It's built to withstand uh, a 707. It did not seem possible that these, these towers that were designed to withstand the impact of a 707 could possibly collapse in such a short order of time from the time that they were hit. The majority of the jet fuel was burnt up instantly in the big fireball, and it was gone. The fires that were left were office furnishings and carpet and things like that. A lot of things in these kind of buildings have to be fire resistant by nature. It's required by code. So there really isn't a whole lot of fuel in there to begin with. The media portrayed the, these fires as being extremely hot, but uh, the fires were not that hot in, in World Trade Center 1 and 2. If you look at the NIST's own data, you could see this. And, uh, and to, to use our own powers of observation, you could tell by, by seeing these fires uh, and seeing black smoke come out the windows, that means that the, the fires were oxygen starved and it was incomplete uh, combustion. And so it was a low temperature fire. I looked up in a manual the burning temperature of jet fuel and found that under the conditions that existed at the World Trade Center on 9-11, uh, that jet fuel had to have been burning at about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I also noticed that the official explanation of what happened there was that the heat from the fire supposedly softened the steel and thereby brought the buildings down. If you have a flame at 750 degrees, 
you can hold that flame under a steel beam forever and you'll never reach a high enough temperature to bend steel, let alone melt it. So immediately I knew at that point that the official explanation was dead wrong. Rather than a slow groaning collapse that we might anticipate, the Twin Towers show in the videos a very rapid, sudden onset of destruction. What does this imply? This claim that the upper section of each of the towers crushed the lower section. However, when you watch video closely, in the case of World Trade Center 1, you'll see that the upper section disintegrates itself. It appears to be a controlled demolition of its own, of the upper section. The top section pushing on the bottom section, it's going to meet equal forces as it goes. Both sections are going to be uh, demolished at the same rate. So by the time you've crushed up 15 stories below it, the top 15 stories are also going to be crushed. And so there's nothing left now to crush the rest of the building. You're looking for a jolt. That this thing, if it actually comes down and hits, you should be able to see the point at which they actually impact because it would actually slow down the motion of the falling block. Before the tower started collapsing from the top, the antenna started to fall. And the antenna, uh, of course, was over the middle of the elevator shafts. I'm very familiar with the interior structure uh, that surrounded the elevator shafts and uh, the accessibility which the elevator companies had 24-7. It wouldn't be a problem once you gained access to the uh, elevator shafts. Then a team of loading experts would have access to all the core columns and beams. The rest could be accomplished at that point by just the right kind of explosives for the job at hand. The only way that I can see that the towers could have collapsed is that the interior columns were compromised. <laughs> 